Hey guys, welcome back to our second session of our series on Stronger Together. We're talking about godly friendships as, as we move into the next, uh, the next lesson today. It's gonna, be, it's gonna be similar to the first one with the main theme being that guys, we just don't need to go through life together and isolate it. And today's topic is called uh, the command to connect. So I wanna look into some verses that uh, the Apostle Paul wrote to the Corinthian church. Let's, let's read that, it's gonna be on the screen. It says, 1 Corinthians 12, 21, the eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you, and the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem weaker are indispensable, and the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor, and the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty. While, we, um, while our presentable parts need no special treatment, but God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it, so that there should be no division in the body, but that the parts should have equal concern for one another. If one part suffers, the other parts suffer with it, and if one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. So as we look at that, you know, Paul's talking about the physical body, he's comparing it to the church body, and I want to take it another step further, and I want us to, you know, to look, especially at verse 25, it says, all parts should have equal concern for each other. So all men should have concern for each other. We shouldn't be living these selfish lives where we don't really care about what's going on with the other men that are around us, especially in our church. And if one part suffers, it says, uh, we should suffer with it. And if one part is honored, we should rejoice with it. So we need to have men around us who are willing to suffer with us, that are willing to go through difficult times with us and that we should have people around us that are ready to rejoice with us when those times come. So we need to have groups of men around us who are ready to commit to this spiritual growth and spiritual development. Um, you know, we can only grow so fast by ourselves, but if we have men that are around us pushing us and encouraging us, you know, the growth is going to be exponential and it's going to go so much faster. We need to have a uh, a group. We need to have, whether it's a small group or a big group, that can deal, you know, candidly with these things that men go through uh, in our lives with, you know, in regards to marriage and career, raising children, parenting, uh, temptations, all of those kind of things. We need, to, uh, we need to have men around us so that we can grow in those areas and that we can protect ourselves in those areas. The author here, is, he, he's got a great quote. He says, men become men in the company of other men. See, if you surround yourself with a bunch of immature men that are really kids, uh, you're not going to grow. You're not going to grow to become the kind of godly man that he wants you to become. So for God's man, connecting with other godly men is imperative. It's a command. He says, you know, you need to be together. And we're going to look at some more scriptures that talk about that. Uh, in fact, let's go into 2 Timothy uh, 2.20 right now. It says, in a wealthy home, some utensils are made of gold and silver. Some are made of wood and clay. The expensive utensils are used for special occasions and the cheap ones for everyday use. If you keep yourself pure, you will be a special utensil for honorable use. Your life will be clean and you will be ready for the master to use for every good work. Verse 22 says, run from anything that stimulates youthful lust. Instead, pursue righteous living faithfulness, love, and peace. Enjoy the companionship of those who call on the Lord with pure hearts. You see, it says to enjoy the companionship of those who call on the Lord. They, he's telling us right here, you should be hanging out with Christian brothers. This is, this is my version of that, okay? Enjoy the companionship of those who are kind of like-minded with you. And it said, you know, another word for run is flee from these youthful desires, youthful lusts. I think about Potiphar's wife, you know, putting the moves on Joseph when he had just gotten out of prison and was in serving in their house. Um, you know, he ran, he took off running and, and that's a, a great example for what we need. We need to have guys around us that will encourage us when youthful, lustful temptations are coming our way. Now, I wanna read for you, uh, read for you from Hebrews 3, 13. Um, it says this, you must warn each other every day while it is still today so that none of you will be deceived by sin and have a hardened heart against God. You see where it says we need to warn each other every day. You need to check in with guys every day. You need to have people that you talk to every day. And you know, you, you might think that that's overkill and it doesn't even have to be a big deal. Just check in on someone, say, how are you doing? Uh, how are things going uh, for you? Are you 
You don't, even, you don't even have to say, are you struggling with anything? We don't have to get that deep that quickly with people. You could just be, you're, you're sharing something funny with them. Let them know that you're in your life, that you are in their life and that you care about them. That's the most important thing. Hebrews 10, 23 through 25, here's another slide. It says this, let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm. For God can be trusted to keep his promise. This is the part I want, to, want you to pay attention to. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together as some do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. Um, a couple of things happened this past week. Um, I, w- I was in the coffee shop on Sunday morning and I ran into a uh, old guy. And when I say old, he was told me he was 85 years old and he was sitting there by himself. And, you know, I kind of have a special place in my heart for older guys anyway. And the fact that he was sitting there by himself drinking a cup of coffee, I thought, you know what, I'll just, while I'm waiting on my coffee to come, I'll sit down and just talk to him, introduce myself. And uh, as we started talking, I realized this guy was kind of lonely. You know, he'd lost his wife a few years ago. He's had some family in town, but when I asked him, you know, what he did before he retired, he said he was a pastor uh, at a church. And Uh, I said, well, what do you do now? He says, well, I told you I'm retired. I said, no, that's not what I asked you. I said, what do you do now? What are you doing now that you're retired? I said, you still drive, right? He said, yeah, I still drive. I said, well, are you doing any kind of ministry work? Are you serving in any kind of way? And he just got this really straight, kind of sober look in his face. He looked at me with tears in his eyes. He said, no, I'm not. Um, I said, are you connected with any, any groups of men or anything? He said, yeah, I go to a a men's Bible study once a week, and I really like that, he said, but he said, yeah, he said, the, the sad thing is, he says, I just don't think that I can relate with young people these days. And I, so I started, he said, even my language is different from them. And I, I told him the story about my mom who's living in a older age retirement kind of community and about how she's trying to bake bread and getting to know people and stopping in and giving them a gift and, and getting to know them. And, and I said, you know, maybe you ought to think about some kind of way to to reach out and, and encourage people that are your age. If you feel like you're, you're not connecting with young people, I bet there's a bunch of older single men like you or widows or whoever that you could be encouraging. And, and I'm not saying that to brag and say, hey, look at me, look what I did this past Sunday, but it's more of like, we need to look for opportunities to encourage people. As it says here, um, we need to stimulate them uh, and spur them on to good works. I got a call the other day from uh, a friend of mine in Mexico who has given me an update on this battered uh, women's facility that we've been, help, we've been helping build down there over the last few years. And they've started taking in their first uh, women. They're, they're probably only halfway built, but this one family came in to him, and I don't want, want to go into all the details, but it was horrific. The, the wife was uh, being chained to her bed uh, like a slave. Uh, she couldn't uh, even go to the bathroom uh, her husband would disappear for days at a time. Um, when he'd come back, he'd beat her and rape her and things like that. And um, so anyway, she eventually got, she got loose and uh, she was able to come to this place. Somebody helped get her out and she was safe and they got her to another country in South America that she got on a bus and left with her four kids. But the point of the story is, is I, I knew that some of the guys who had worked on this facility, I wanted to call them and, and encourage them to, you know, let's get back down there. I, I called one guy in particular and I said, hey, let, we got to get back down there and, and get busy on this place. We need, to, we need to help finish up. Here's some of the work that they're doing down there. And he was in, he was fired up. When are we going? You know, let's get down there. Let's get a bunch of guys to get back down there. When we hear things like that, when we hear God's, uh, God's moving in this world, we need to encourage each other with that. We need to spur people on, like it says, spurring people on to, to do good works. So one of the goals, as we look at this, the goals of of the verses that we're reading uh, is to develop these kind of godly friendships. And what is the purpose really of this? And if you had to really kind of boil it down to one thing, I would say it is to encourage each other. You know, encourage each other when times are good, encourage each other when times are bad. Um, But mostly we need to encourage each other to stay away from sin. But for me, my main purpose of wanting to have godly friendships from a standpoint is just life's just more fun if you got guys around it's if it's more adventurous it's more uh it's more challenging it's just 
I don't know. I, I, didn't, I wouldn't consider myself really an extrovert or an introvert. I think I land somewhere in the middle, but I do know that I like being around people. When I left uh, college after my sophomore year, I lived in a dorm at a Christian college in Tennessee and had guys around me all the time. And they were great dudes. And we, you know, we had a great time together. In fact, three of us have made a vow after watching this movie, uh, uh, I, what's it called? Stepping out in style or going in style or something like that. It's Morgan Freeman and Michael Caine. And they're, they end up robbing a bank in their old age. And, but these three guys, they're all retired. They're all widows, or not widows, they're widowers. And they all live together and they're sharing expenses and they all have their little recliner in front of the TV. And I thought, you know what? I'd rather do that in my, in my old age if I outlive my wife, which is probably not gonna happen. But if I do, um, you know, we, we made a pact, the three of us, that we are all gonna, we're all gonna live together after watching this movie. We're not gonna rob a bank together, but we're all gonna sh- share expenses and just encourage each other, uh, you know, up until the end. But after I left this college, I went, I transferred to Mississippi State. I came in as a junior. I moved into an apartment off campus by myself. I had no roommate. I didn't know hardly anybody there, even though I was from Mississippi. And it took a long time to develop some of these friendships uh, to get it back to the level where I was before. And I was super lonely, honestly. It was like one of the worst, deadest periods of my life was that first semester there. I didn't know anybody. Uh, I didn't get plugged into any kind of church group that I liked or anything. It was, it was tough. And I, I really feel for guys that, you know, that live like that on a, on a daily basis, uh, even as, as they get older. So I want to just finish up with this. We're going to talk about the three benefits to meeting together as men. What, what are the top three things? I'm going to go through those. These are, these are going to be on your slides. The first one, meeting together brings encouragement that you're not alone in your struggle. It brings encouragement that you're not alone. Most of the times when we share something we've struggled with um, as a group, other guys are gonna chime in there and say, you know what, I've been through that too. And here's how I kind of handle it. They had the same issue. Um, So this conversation goes a long way to affirming, you know, to you and to others that we're all in this together. Uh, You're not in this alone. We all need this. And when when I'm talking about meeting together, this could be a group of two guys. It could be three guys, could be four could be our Iron Man group, but I, th- I feel like that's just a start. Our Tuesday night, it should develop into something more than that. You know, if that's all you're getting is just that little, that little bit each week, I feel like you need more. I, I feel like you should make an effort to, to get more involved with other men. Okay, the second one, meeting together urges you to do what you know you really should be doing, okay? It urges you to do what you really know you should do. Um, There's a quote here, it says, accountability to other Christians simply reflects our greater accountability to Christ. So let me read that again. Accountability to other Christians reflects our greater accountability to Christ. Each of us wants to walk with God and we need that accountability uh, to do exactly that. The third benefit to meeting together with other men is this. Meeting together gives you friends that will support you and that will pray for you. Um, I don't know how you guys are doing with your friend groups. I don't know if that's an an important part of your life or not. Uh, And I hope that it is. Proverbs 17, 17 says, a friend loves at all time and a brother is born for adversity. You see through emails, text messages, phone calls, you know, we can pray for each other. We can encourage each other. We can make each other laugh when someone's down. There's so many good things about staying connected with other people. The circle that I'm in, you know, we've gone through job changes. We've gone through, you know, daily frustrations with bosses and things like that. Relationships challenged, family deaths, family illnesses, you know, COVID illnesses that we've all kind of gone through, you know, and other struggles like that. So I want you to know that you're not alone, or I want you to know that you don't have to be alone. There are, there are plenty of guys out there that are, that are just like you that would probably love to start getting together. They'd love to start encouraging each other. It doesn't have to go deep quickly. It, it may take some time to get comfortable around those people, but at least start with something. Start with getting together and playing golf or playing tennis. I got a friend of mine I'm playing pickleball with, you know, about once a week. You know, it's fun just to hang out and do those kind of things. And then once those friendships start developing, then when the opportunities come up to really encourage each other and to really pray for each other, it's supernatural to do that. Um, it's very comfortable to do that. So 
Uh, hopefully this encouraged you today. Connect with each other, men. Don't try to go through this, this life by yourself. It's not worth it. Spur each other on to good works like the Apostle Paul encourages us to do. We'll see you next week, guys.